my name is Ahmed Tharwat. I'm a host of uh, the Arab American TV show, Bilahdan. Uh, is, uh, as we always say, a show is an accent for those uh, without one. And uh, we, all, we all know this has uh, been the quagmire in Syria where a lot of uh, uh, regional power interfered and also international power uh, and turning that uh, most peaceful uh, Arab Spring uh, protest to a violent one uh, and uh, uh, using uh, war on terrorism uh, to uh, uh, justify killing and massacres. Uh, just to give you some background on Fadia, she is a writer, activist, and uh, also a painter. And also, as you know, I think as her husband, she you know, was in uh, Syria, Damascus, and was there, and uh, she studied with. One of the biggest renowned Syrian painter, Adnan uh, Abdul Rahman, and uh, uh, graduated from Ismail Institute. And uh, you know, during the Arab Spring, uh, that both of them uh, couldn't really uh, perform arts and couldn't really uh, stage, uh, you know, true to to their uh, artistic uh, integrity and uh, support the uh, the Bashar regime, Assad regime. And they thought their life has been threatening as things got worse, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, they decided to leave uh, for the United States. Uh, both women in uh, in, uh, in Los Angeles, they lived there for, uh, for you know I think now six years now. Yes. Uh, and uh, and uh, and so let's start to with uh, uh, let's start to say who take us through. Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Fadi, and I think. You, uh, the American audience uh, that have been busy with Trump and all this circus, political circus here, and uh, and I think we don't hear enough uh, about mm -hmm. what's going on in Syria. And uh, so tell us uh, how, uh, the decision for moving from uh, being an artist and also being uh, an activist. First of all, uh, March 15 is the anniversary of the Syrian revolution. So. We were planning to do something, and I was saying, Jay, I am kind of hopeless. I felt like uh, powerless because I have been trying to raise awareness about the Syrian genocide for a long time, and I was, I felt I am not doing any progress. Uh, in the U.S., it's a very big country. The news does not cover Syria. People don't know anything about Syria. A lot of Americans I talk to, they think, there is no war anymore in Syria. So they don't really understand that every second we are like living, there is an innocent child, innocent woman, innocent man is dying from different, now from different uh, actors in Syria, unfortunately. So because we felt we don't have power, we thought maybe if we followed Gandhi method because Gandhi he used this to stop many uh, many things happening in his country and he was very powerful and I admire him so much and I thought about him I read about him and I read how he did it and he's my role model I think I would do exactly what Gandhi did with hope that people will understand how urgent it is, because I'm hoping that people will understand our suffering now, understand why we are doing this, understand how urgent the matter is. And this is why we decided to do that with hope that the media will pick up the news, people will join us, people will share that, and with hope that we started something, and hopefully that will end. Tell me the difference between, um, you know, raising awareness through a hunger strike and uh, having like an art show of your work that reflects what's going on in Syria, which was very, very impressive. And uh, are you reaching a different audience or are you trying to have a different, uh, uh, raise up par a little bit? Uh, you know, uh, artists' uh, uh, role also are just trying to create a possibilities uh, to mm -hmm. a solution, and that, that was mm -hmm. the way of thinking? Look, I tried to do many exhibitions here in Los Angeles, and I noticed that the same kind of audience, they will come to my exhibition over and over. 
the kind of audience they came to my exhibition, people that are already open-minded, people that are already informed, because people who are interested in art in general, they, they are in a certain level of education. So I wanted to reach out to different audience, honestly. Like I was thinking, here America is the culture of food. It's the culture of eating. Yeah. Like every American I would meet, the first question he would ask me, oh, what is the best restaurant, your favorite restaurant you go to? Uh, are you able to find the Middle Eastern food in your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. These are the questions. So I was thinking maybe like going to the extreme, preventing yourself from eating as a kind of protest, it will really draw their attention. This is my hope. I'm hoping that because they admire and they love food, and, and food is a great aspect of any culture. So I wanted to draw their attention, tell them how urgent it is. Imagine I live in Los Angeles where you can find any ethnic food you want, you can find anything you want, and you, you can grave anything and eat anything you want, and you enjoy it. I am depriving myself from that to tell you I, it's not okay. I cannot go on with my life because people are dying. Nice, of course. Uh, we have here um, uh, Jay Abdu, who is a Syrian-American actor uh, based in Los, An Los Angeles now, where he is now. He was born in 62 in Damascus. was fascinating in acting early age, and especially, uh, especially the classic one, Dr. Zivago and Godfather, and all those movies that we grow up with. He got interested and performed in a different uh, performance over there. Uh, went to Romania, studied there. Tell, tell us, how did you join uh, this uh, this project? Well, uh, to be honest with you, we are not only husband and wife. We are partners in everything in this life. We are friends. We are partners. We are um, even before and you got married. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Our our mind is on all, almost on the same page. So we try uh, to plan for our lives in on in the same you know project in the same route on the same road so when we discuss this I, w I we both wanted to do something or we keep doing something but we felt as Fadia told you we felt that it wasn't enough so when she came with the idea let's do let's start a hunger strike i said wow wow i love this idea i don't know i i want to be able to do it but yes yes let's start this just to share the information and to, to raise awareness to the america to send the message to the americans and europeans and the free world that there is something wrong happening in syria and the media is not covering enough for you to know, or they cover what they need you to know. So I want you to dig deeper. We are not eating here for maybe a week, two, or maybe three. We don't know. We're doing good. Uh, we're we're not very good, but that's fine. Whenever you think of the suffering in other places, in other parts in the world, you would say, come on. I, I'm okay. I, it's what? What is this suffering comparing to that? To those crossing borders, walking days and nights on mines, you know, walking through the mines or crossing the seas or the waters, drowning, losing their beloved, um, watching their beloved killed in front of them doing nothing, I mean, un being incapable to do anything. So our suffering is nothing, is almost zero compared to theirs. Just, uh, but, your mind is not uh, not the only one on the same page. You're also, your stomach has to be on the same, on the same yes. page. Yes. Uh, I know. Tell us the logistics of it. How does it work? First of all, I read a lot about it, many research. And um, it's all in the mind. If you can control your mind, you can control your stomach. The problem with the side effects, 
like the third day was the hardest day for me because I couldn't stop throwing out and it was very painful. My stomach was acting very weird, I don't know why. For Jay, his um, joints, he has a lot of pain in his joint and he has a headache. So every day is different. I couldn't go to work on Friday. I, I called and told them I'm very sick, I'm sorry. I did many research. Uh, I read about the Chinese method of fasting. I read about And I believe in nature. I'm hoping my organs will act good because it's different from person to another. But uh, there are symptoms and, and our body will tell us. So we are planning to do this as much as long as we can. The problem here with Los Angeles now, we cannot really go out because uh, we are dizzy. So I, I'm not sure if uh, we can drive. I will, I will go uh, using the bus on Monday to work uh, because I can't drive. I don't think I'm capable of driving. Uh, our our friends they are um, they were shocked first and they were very concerned and they told us please stop we love you don't kill yourself I'm not killing myself I'm just I want to draw attention and I have no other method and if you have any other method let me know I'm ready to do it but let me know I honestly I tried I researched I couldn't find anything else. But if you have any better plan to draw attention, let me know. They claim they couldn't stop the Holocaust because they didn't know, right? Nowadays in Syria, we have internet, we have a full episode of videos, we have pictures, and nothing is happening. Why? Because the propaganda of many different countries created the alternative truth. People now, they are doubting the, uh, the credibility of those videos. People now, the question now, not anymore how much those people are suffering. The question now, is this true or not true? They are questioning the evidence. Many big organizations working on human rights, they will tell you in their report, there is atrocity happening in Syria. But the public, because of the propaganda from different actors, they started to question those, those evidence. So now we are living in, 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 in horrible, I think, era where even you cannot, with all this technology, to prove and tell people that this is happening. It's, a, it's really misery for the human race that uh, using technology is not as effective as we thought. T tell us a little bit about the support you get from uh, the community there. Well, uh, from my friends, I get the support. We, when we meet, we meet on a tea or coffee or and I, and I have water. And they are supportive. They are just worried about me and my wife. Um, they, uh, they, not, they, they don't tell me to stop. But they support me and they say, I, we're worried about you. What can we do? So, so many of them are willing to share on the social media and to speak out and to invite us to certain platforms to speak about our cause. And they are more willing to spread the word in their communities. I'm talking about all kinds of... Um, people living in, in, in California, all religions, races, um, ethnic background or cultural background, which is amazing to uh, not stick with the Syrian community and to get out to other people who are not used to talk to you and spread your, your case and finding them being, being will, willing, I mean, being very happy to listen and to invite their, their community to listen to our cause, which is amazing. I mean, I think we are doing... You have a, you have a page here, uh, uh -huh. and uh, you have a, a short video that shows, um, you know, uh, in, you know, a sign in Arabic and in English, and uh, it's really, it's a very simple message you try to send people and uh -huh. ask them to...
Fad, yeah, you try to, to reach also an Arabic uh, audience. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe the action of the Arab community, Arab American, also when they hear about this back home. Okay, Whatever I, is left of the home yeah. are we talking about? We wrote that in Arabic because every day, every day we have tons of messages in social media from people inside Syria asking us to help them. Many people of them died because we lost connection with. And I wrote that in Arabic just to send a message, message, message to them, tell them, telling them we are with you. We feel you will never forget about you. This is why we wrote this in Arabic. We want to tell them we are, because a lot of people will accuse us, oh, you live in Los Angeles, you have a great life, you don't care anymore. Reality, our life, in every single second, is thinking about Syria. Every chance we have to raise awareness, we don't stop. Uh, this is for the Arabic. For the English, I wrote that in English because my aim is the English-speaking audience. I want to let them know it's not okay. So what is the difference? We, we have been talking a lot, right? And our friends around us, we have community, we have connection now in the U.S., around the U.S. because of our presentation. But I think it's like you don't, we have in Arabic, you say, you don't know how much you love someone unless you start to feel you are losing him. Fadia, you mean with all this ugly uh, reality that uh, in, in what Syria are living now, and mm -hmm. uh, you are facing this uh, ugliness with beauty, with uh, non-violence, uh, which is hunger, also your art, which is, uh, you know, it's fascinating how you can produce so much beauty out of this uh, tragedy. Keep painting, keep myself non-violent, is the way, is my statement in life that I am still alive. The minute they stop me from producing beauty and doing non-violence activism, that does mean they killed me. You know what, in the trial of Ceausescu, they told him, we are sending you to death, not because you gave order to kill those people in Timisoara and in other cities, but above all, for killing the Romanian spirit for 43 years in a row. Uh, they decided to, to, after seven years of killing and massacre and uh, destruction in Syria, uh, the least they can do, they can go on hunger strike and raise awareness uh, of uh, all this madness uh, in Syria. And uh, uh, let's stop killing and uh, let's uh, find uh, different ways. And that's, I think, uh, the role of art uh, or the or the artist is to create a possibility and uh, creating possibility mm -hmm. to to what's going on in Syria. Uh, it is uh, the way go. Thank you so much, and I appreciate mm -hmm. your.